Hey guys, Psychoma here, and something that I've really wondered about recently is whether I can learn anything new from regions other than any East or Europe. Do other regions perhaps play in a completely different way or think about the game in a completely different way compared to us? And so we can watch the Asian servers and see if we can learn anything new. Let's hop right into it. This is the winner. I actually, I, I didn't, I never kept track of like who the winner was or any of these servers. So I actually didn't know that this was the winner. Um, I have no idea if this is a, a scented reference, but, but the winner for all-star showdown for Asia was Runa King seven. Wow. I'm, this is really good, consistent placement. And something that I do know from the past is that the Asian games for the finals are actually really stacked. So they're not like very easy to play in, um, but they are stacked. And so we can learn something from this. Uh, definitely. Let's hop right into it. I have no idea where he lands. I've not watched any of these games before. The culture, the culture is different in terms of like what scrims are offered, employ. Like there's so many different things just in server difference. And I'm curious if, if the game is played differently. Obviously, fundamental to Fortnite are there. Obviously, the game will be played at a very similar level. I'm just curious, like, can we learn anything new? Are there strategies that we have not been exposed to yet? Definitely, I uh, think there's a lot to be learned from here. Okay, seems like he's landing retail. He's probably going to be contested. Uh, my guess, if I had to predict, is that if he is contested, he'll probably split retail. I think most people will be pretty happy if you can just get three, four buildings and, and hop out after that. The biggest thing to be learned from that is that in a setting where it's like solo grands and you can't just queue again immediately when you die, dying off spawn is the worst thing that can happen to you. So if you can find a way to guarantee that you never die off spawn in this sort of setting, it's really, really good. So if that means leaving and not having an ego and just not fighting everything, um, it would be really good. There's three people here retail. There's one of these and there's an extra arrow. Uh, that's just the NPC. But these two arrows down here um, is other people, right? They're enemies. Since that's the case, if you try to take a 1v1, it's more than likely that 1v1 is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, and that third person is going to look for that third, per third party opportunity. So retail completely plays out differently because it's three people as opposed to how it would play out if it's two people. Um, so maybe knowing this, these guys are playing differently. And the best part, the part, best part of a retail, is, is I'm used to land here. Um, the best part of a retail is the fact that mats don't really matter if you're indoors. Uh, if someone's pushing you, and you have like maybe 300 mats it's okay because you can just bunker down in one of the buildings and sort of farm infinitely that way this is what i expected i've actually seen this sort of play style before in solos at retail um they sort of loot what they can and you'll notice the other people on retail have left already as well it's almost like a an agreement just like okay yeah fighting is actually just useless it's not going to net us anything so immediately first observation is that asian finals um it is stacked it is definitely stacked he's really really trying to get surge because that is the first win condition that you need to get past right so if you can't get enough surge and solos is not that much right if two three four tags should get you past first wave of surge but sometimes if you don't try to get it early enough and you try to get it when everyone's boxed up already it'll be too late because no one's going to open on you and then you're going to be forced to go smack on walls which is never ideal in a stacked solo game you need to sort of get those tags earlier on and so leaving retail it builds a bigger case for leaving retail early right you need to leave uh, your draw spot early enough to go wander around and get mats on the way to like a good position in circle and on your way to the good position in circle you can look for those tags because that's the time when people aren't based up right early first circle you need to just rack up surge if you can build up even more surge than just three to four tags it'll be even better because later on uh in second third fourth circle you're gonna have a hard time getting that surge as well so this is exactly what runa king seven is doing he's just making sure that He's gonna try to get a surge as early as possible. Um, his mats are good and his loadout's really good. He has no mobility as of right now. Um, but I think what he'll do, just a prediction, uh, is that since this is a launchpad meta, he's gonna really prioritize basing up on higher layers in circles three, four, five. And what this does is that basing up on higher layers just ensures that you can steal launch pads much easier. Not only is it easier to see the launch pads where they are, because sometimes just having that audio isn't enough, um, it's way easier to jump onto the launch pad from above than it is to ramp up it, you know, from below. Every time a launch pad is placed in Fortnite, uh, especially in solos, it becomes extremely chaotic after that first person goes, right? Because everyone else wants to take that launch pad. And sometimes there becomes um, a situation where fights are just forced. Fights are just forced around the launch pad just because someone's pumped them for like 150 and then they start a fight. So it can be very dangerous to go, you know, steal a launch pad. It's definitely not safe. Um, so if you can do everything you can before that, like for example, basing up on higher layers to make it easier for yourself, um, it'll be really good. He has secured a launch pad. Um, ideally, he should just go. Let's look at the map actually. First circle is the top right of the map. Uh, second circle is really far top right. And so I think third circle is going to appear somewhere around here, if I had to guess right because 
this is just how it is usually in fortnite when zones pull really really extreme they tend to pull extreme again right i don't think he has the option to really go further right because of the congestion here if he tries to go further now he's gonna have to burn a lot of mats in order to make it happen where he can go all the way out here so right now it's just better to stay here i think and just wait until next zone shows and then sort of rotate using the builds of other people you can save your own mats so i don't know if you guys see where he's at but i believe he's right here right that's where he's positioned and so circles would pull right here but then that's no problem because everyone else has to rotate and then it's very easy for himself to rotate the first thing i'm noticing right away is that on these servers um dead side seems to be really strong it doesn't seem like the case in other servers um where people are more aware of dead side but it's like being aware of dead side is not the only thing when surge occurs being dead side is like not the best thing if you don't have that search secured right you want to be on the side where people are congested and there's a lot of action going on so you have vision of that action you can yeah zone pulled exactly where i thought it would it just pulls extreme again it's just better to just play edge here and sort of rack your surge up the only way you're really gonna die there's 79 people and surge is hitting people so it's very nice that he's he's doing playing this way this is definitely right he sees this window to rotate I think he chooses to go at this time because he finds that no one else is leaving but also the guy up top on the electrical tower seemed to be distracted he's shooting ar and so he takes that time to just walk in he goes a little bit to the right i don't think he can go more right he could but i think then he'll be way too close to the guy on the edge but he sort of wraps right you notice this you don't need to be full dead side guys you need to be on the edges so it's really nice that he chose to be you see this congestion right here let me draw it in red okay this congestion right here um it's really strong right this sort of congestion is really really strong um but like the edges if you're like leftmost this is what i call like leftmost rightmost if you're leftmost out here and rightmost right here you could be close to the congestion but it's really really easy for you to actually escape it you can just go like this right because the right the, the side to the right of you is really open but if you're based up right here it's very 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 difficult to rotate out and what actually happens is that your rotate is dependent on other people's rotates so the best thing to do is to make your rotate not dependent on other people by being in an area where you do have a path to escape whenever you want to and the way to do that is to play on these edges like if you place right here if you played right here it's very easy to go like this you see what i'm saying but if you played right here it's very very difficult to do the exact same rotate or a very similar style rotate because it's very hard to go left you get shot you want to just be on the edges of this congestion so you can get that surge but at the same time you have the option to leave so you're sort of taking benefits from both being congested and uncongested right the problem with um trying to play with somewhere all the way out here right you can't just like say the second zone say third circle wasn't showing um you can't just like choose to be out here right because surge exists and so if surge exists and you don't have 300 400 damage off spawn which usually is the case for most solo players you can't just choose to go dead side because then you don't have surge right and this is the main reason why this sort of pattern happens of this huge amount of people in one area because surge exists um and so you sort of have to respect that and so even if the whole server is aware of what dead side is they can't just reap the rewards of dead side without first dealing with their you know obstacle of surge just try to make sure that if you want to sort of apply this to your own games make sure that your rotates are not really dependent on other people and the way to do that is to make sure that you're not just surrounded by enemies it's okay to have one side of one side of you surrounded by enemies so you can sort of like tag them for surge but make sure you have one side of you that is like really open and make sure that you can use that as a rotate it's really good to be what i call leftmost or rightmost and that sort of gives you that freedom to tag people but at the same time leave whenever you want to he's able to do this free rotate and get into circle before literally anyone else does but it, like literally one zone ago he was in the congestion the only difference was he's all there on the right side of congestion and that gives him the ability to leave and and get out here i think he would love to go center third here but i i think he's a little worried about that guy tagging him the whole way it's really open that guy on this on the stack has a really good position to tag everyone right you can see literally everyone on the map um and so runa runa doesn't have the option to go center third like i would usually recommend um this game is so stacked that the usual power positions that you would like to play is not allowed because people hold you surge is a problem um but runa king is in a really good spot he, he's pulled for its own and not only that he's able to just tag everyone it's really nice a lot of people in this game has not dealt with surge they have no early game plan to deal with surge 
And so this is the sort of thing that happens. You ha you have to decide, am I going to go into zone or am I going to have to just start fighting people because of how high Surge is? And so the thing that Runa King 7 did, number one, he has a sniper. Number two, he doesn't over greed his loot. He loots as fast as possible and then leaves the POI. And the pattern, I, I guess the way to do that, right, is to be really efficient in your looting, but also choose a POI where looting doesn't take that long, right? The ways to do this is choose a split drop where the loot is really close together or choose a major POI where you're happy to leave, but make sure that you're only looting two to three buildings so you don't get caught up in a fight where someone else forces the fight on you, right? You have to remember when you go to a major POI and you don't leave early enough, someone could just decide to go build up on top of your building and let you not leave and basically grief your time. Um, that could be beneficial if he's willing to take trades with you and sort of give you surge and take surge for himself. But if he just sits on top of you and decides not to do any of that, then your surge is griefed. Your whole game plan is griefed because you're not able to get early surge. And then by the time you're out of that situation, everyone's going to have surge and be boxed up already. And all these people in this circle right here don't have surge. And that's the problem, right? This sort of area, like, I, I feel like they don't have a good early game plan for Surge, and that, now they're getting punished for it. They can't really free willy-nilly rotate in like this, because then they're out of Surge, and it's really difficult. And it's not it's not only the Surge that's causing the fact that, you know, they can't rotate. They're so close to other people, it's very, very difficult with their mobility to get out of that situation, right? And so Runa King 7's on edge fourth. He's looking for tags as people are coming in. I think this applies a lot more in trios, but never disrespect surge guys you have to make sure that you just go for as much surge as possible the problem i feel like people do in sort of uh tier three tier four the biggest problem is the fact that people think okay it's a danger to be peaking right now so i'm not gonna go for it at all right but i think the fix to that is not actually you know you you, you shouldn't not peak you should learn how to peak properly and learn how to peak in a way that you're almost guaranteed to not get hit and there is a way to do that right you shouldn't think, okay, editing open is a danger. You should learn how to edit open properly at the correct angles, right? And that's the way you can sort of guarantee that you can get as much surge as possible. Be aware of the guy you're shooting. Is he moving? Is he is he based up? Does he have a window open looking at me? Like there's so all these sorts of like tells that can help you figure out whether you're looking at a, a dangerous peak or a, or a safe peak. So just, just sort of think about that. Just make sure that you're not just thinking like, okay, I feel like we have enough surge. We're like 100 above or 200 above. I'm just not going to peek because that's like the safest play to do. Uh, truthfully, it's not the safest play because then in two circles from now, you're going to be screwed over and you're going to have to make a play uh, based off of surge. And every time you make a play based off of surge, it's very difficult because it's forced. You're most likely doing something that you don't want to be doing and you're going to end up doing it in a weirdly weird way, right? Uh, half half pulls. It's somewhat close to him, so it didn't pull max. But he is going to have to make a decent amount of a decent rotate here. I think the game is a little bit bugged out right now. But basically, as he's rotating, he's always watching his back. Every time you'll notice he's jumping forward. He notices there's no immediate danger in the front. So he's always looking back because there is a player behind him. The player is just shotgunning him to try to get him to build. The player behind him is trying to do a little bit of like warning shots. So like get him to build so that this player behind him, right, can take advantage of it. Um, and that's the biggest thing to note there. Um... He goes up a couple layers. This probably has something to do with stealing launch pads. And he builds in. Runa, Runa has a lot of shield. In most cases, in solos, you will not have this much shield. So, um, biggest thing to prioritize is to like just use more mats. Like, don't be afraid to use a little bit of mats during your rotate, during the times that you're like close to boxes, and you could get pumped really hard. Um, just you want to make sure that you can. You should spend where you need to spend. Yeah, he's on a good layer. Zone pulls towards him. He should sort of go late. Maybe get a free rotate. It's a little sketch. I'm a little worried about this. He does have to think about getting impacts though. So it is the right approach. Just don't know about that exact pickaxe there. So let's think about it. He should just go a little bit late. This is good. Um, I'm just trying to, con I'm sort of concerned about the mat usage. Uh, that's why I'm saying go late, but the, the rotate he did there was pretty good. He used like two builds and he got ahead like 10, 15 blocks. He's really chilling. He's, so, he's actively looking around to try to get that impact because there's two concerns here. There's Surge, which is not that big of a concern. It's only 37 alive. So Surge is probably going to run out before it actually zaps people. And the second concern is his mats, right? He has 46 builds and he needs to make sure that he can get an impact before, you know, those builds run out. He's on a, he's on a timer right now. And so he uses his pad. I think he short pads here. The game sort of lagged up, but based on the trajectory of like how he glided, he short pads. Um, he builds in. He has 360 metal, which is a lot. He could potentially make second zone work. He gets out of the box immediately, which is really nice. Yeah, he's chilling. 
He just needs to find this kill. And I think something to realize is that people are going to start running out of mats, right? And so he can get this kill if he waits a little bit. He can totally get this kill reliably. But he should actively look as he's as he's going forward. He finds this really nice layer where he's not really in danger from second night because there's a metal type in front of him. He needs to go all, all in on this kill. Yeah, yeah. This guy's no match, clearly. He needs to get this kill, edit down, and just go. I think that's exactly what he does. And so he gets siphon mats. He's at a 200, 200 mats right now. He's staying on the right side of zone. Something to be said on the playing on the edges. This is something that I'm going to talk about in a video that I make in the future about power positions, right? Um, let me just draw a zone. I can't. Oh, this, you can't even draw these shapes. You need to buy the full version. Screw that, dude. Um, okay, I'm drawing my own circle. I don't care. Let's draw my own circle real quick. Actually, I'll draw a moving zone. It's probably better that way. Let's sort of draw like what happened here, right? This transition. Uh, this was the this is the end of first moving, right? And it goes this way. And then this is the end of second moving, right? I know the sizes of the circle should be smaller as they go on, but we'll ignore that for now. So, Runa King 7, somewhere around here, right? He was somewhere around here in that moving. Uh, and then he sort of stays on the right of moving zone, right? You don't have to stay on the edge itself. You just need to be to the rightmost of all the players, right? And so that gives you... The, the problem with staying all the way out on the edge like all the way out here is that usually height can see you because you're not close enough to builds right um so if you're like just under the congestion using other builds as cover as much as possible because you don't you do not at any circumstance be using your own builds uh unnecessarily right so he's staying near the congestion the only difference is he's staying on the right so if he does need a path because someone's cutting him off he can just go more to the right because there's always this open space on the right um and also he can never get pinched getting shot at like this right because he he knows there's no one to his right or at least there's very little people to his right he should take advantage of this and so later on you'll notice he does somewhere like this of a rotate right and then later on he goes really far right right and then he stays all the way on the right side of zone um and that just is really nice this is basically what's happening he's staying all the way to the right he should honestly wow that's a really good shot I was, gonna, I was gonna suggest go even more right but this impact is probably just gonna win him the game and when i say win him the game i mean do really well uh there's other things that you really need to get right i think to win the entire thing probably secure height is one of them Hi height and solos definitely plays out different than trios does it might not be as big of a win condition but stair tarping staying all the way ahead of zone this makes perfect sense because when you have an impact like this where you have 200 metal at this stage of the game which is definitely above average right in terms of mats he's definitely above average he probably has like the most mats or the second most amount of mats in this entire game right and so if you're in this sort of position you should totally totally you should still save mats you shouldn't burn mats unnecessarily because you still have like a whole moving zone to go here right this is the last moving but you need to stay ahead. You need to stay safe. And this is exactly what he's doing. You'll notice he's all the way in the front. No way. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, let's talk about that. Because that is definitely avoidable. He came top four, but I definitely think there was more to be done here. Um, so this is a little bit greedy. Uh, all the walls are okay. But placing just a floor above you in this sort of situation when you have nine extra builds and there's only four people left is a little bit scary because height could totally psycho in um and the reason you want to put an extra layer above you and not sort of below you because this is a fresh build number one but this is a fresh build uh this is not a fresh build the chances of people the one of the four people being alive actually owning this build is, is very low um so you don't have to worry about that but this is a this is not you don't have to worry about this at all uh but the top you're very rarely ever looking up right uh since you're going to be pickaxing this wall to like continue moving forward in, in moving zone or this wall right or the wood um it, it's probably really important to just place that cone above you because the high player could have just ar'd your top and you would not be aware so you're going to take free damage that way um because the, the build is still really weak uh but number two is just make sure that no cycle plays happen right if a cycle play happens on your wall you're probably going to be instantly aware about that sort of thing right because you can hear it you can probably just turn around and pay attention like people people often just look on the horizontal way more than they look up right it's really hard to be aware of up 
So knowing that, this is something that Taysen does. Every angle that Taysen knows he's not gonna be aware about for the next like five to 10 seconds, he just double layers or just walls it off completely, right? And so putting just one piece up top is really bad. And also he should just guarantee put a backward stair here. Like if he's a, if he knows he's gonna just go through, right? He's gonna break this and then go straight through the metal wall to like keep going to the moving zone. He should just build a backward stair because that's another way to double layer top right because then there's two layers uh, but it also blocks your back off the area behind you is, is fresh as well you want to just double layer it i think that's the fix here let's watch it from his perspective actually if you just double layer it off you'll have more of a warning and can sort of pay attention to that sort of thing this person has zero builds just completely psychos in right it's really hard to be aware of that sort of thing right it's really really difficult the biggest thing that i'm impressed with Aruna is his early game and mid game macro when he has the opportunity to play that sort of left side right side congested and so if you ever wondered like okay i'm doing rotates pretty well like my los but i'm just like my rotates just feel really hard try to take something away from his um runa's rotates because runa's rotates is really really strong in terms of his positioning right it all starts from like where you position it can get out of hand very quickly if you position wrong one circle because then it snowballs into the fact that you have to just play edge to edge like for the rest of the game and that's not that's never ideal it's never never ideal to do that um either way guys if you enjoyed this video leave a like consider subscribing and and i'll post more educational content in the future um for now i will see you guys bye bye